Keith Allen Ranier is an American felon, convicted sex trafficker and the founder of Nexium, a multi-level marketing company and cult based near Albany, New York. Between 1998 and 2018, Nexium developed a following primarily through its personal development seminars, recruiting several celebrities and socialites. However, the organization also faced multiple accusations of systemic sexual abuse of female members by Ranier and members of his inner circle, leading to the arrests of Ranier and other Nexium members in early 2018. Ranier has subsequently been characterized in media reports as a cult leader. On June 19, 2019, Ranier was convicted of federal crimes including sex trafficking of children, conspiracy, and conspiracy to commit forced labor, all related to a secret society within Nexium known as DOS, or The Vow. On October 27, 2020, Ranier was sentenced to 120 years in prison. Chapter 1, Early Life and Career Chapter 1 Section 1, Childhood and Education Keith Ranier was born on August 26, 1960, to James Ranier, a New York City advertising executive, and his wife Vera Oskipko, a ballroom dancing instructor. Ranier's father recalls that Vera drank more than she should have, and in adulthood, Keith himself privately described his mother as an alcoholic. When Ranier was five, he and his family relocated from Brooklyn to Southern New York. When he was around eight years old, his parents separated. Ranier attended a public junior high school and attended Suffern High School for ninth grade before transferring to Rockland Country Day School in Congers, New York. He graduated in June 1978, two months prior to his 18th birthday. As an adult, Ranier reported that he read Isaac Asimov's Mind Control themed work Second Foundation at age 12 and credited the novel with inspiring his work in Nexium. Ranier's former partner, Barbara Bouchy, has shared stories about his childhood which she claims to have been told by his father, James, what we did is we told Keith about how gifted and how intelligent he was. And he said it was almost like a switch went off. And suddenly overnight he turned into like Jesus Christ. And that he was superior and better than everybody like he was a deity. He said it was that dramatic and that profound, he said it went right to his head. Bushi herself likewise recalled a story about a 13-year-old Ranier's relationships with girls, dozens of young girls were calling the house and was overhearing his conversations with them where he was telling every single girl the same thing, I love you. You're the special one. You're important. You are the only one in my life, and I love you. And she says, he's saying this to all these girls. He's clearly lying cause all of them are not special. In 1982, Ranier graduated from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute with a 2.26 GPA having failed or barely passed many of the upper level math and science classes he bragged about taking. Chapter 1 Section 2, Early Adulthood According to reporting by the Times Union, in 1984, the 24-year-old Ranier allegedly had a sexual relationship, with 15-year-old Gina Melita, after the two met in a theater group. After ending their relationship, Melita introduced him to her friend Gina Hutchinson, also 15. Gina Hutchinson's sister Heidi told the Times Union that Ranier had been having sex with Gina. After Heidi found Ranier climbing into Gina's bedroom window and confronted them, Ranier told her that Gina was a Buddhist goddess meant to be with him. Gina dropped out of school and continued her relationship with Ranier, working at his company Consumers Byline for a time. On October 11, 2002, Gina Hutchinson was found dead of a gunshot wound to her head on the grounds of the Karmatriana Dharmashakra Buddhist Monastery in Woodstock, an apparent suicide. In June 1988, the Times Union profiled Ranier, reporting on his membership in the Mega Society after he achieved a high score on founder Ronald K. Hoflin's Mega Test, an unsupervised, 48 question test published in the April 1985 issue of Omni Magazine. Although the mega test has been widely criticized as not having been properly validated, the 1989 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records described the Hoflin Research Group as the most exclusive ultra-high IQ society, 
and the 1989 Australian edition identified Ranier, Marilyn Vo Savant, and Eric Hart as the highest scoring members of the group. Chapter 1 Section 3 Multi Level Marketing Career Through the 1980s, Ranier was involved with the multi level marketing company Amway. Heidi Hutchinson recalled that during the late 80s, Ranier was fascinated by Amway, Scientology, and neuro linguistic programming. Ranier also worked as a computer programmer for New York State's Division of Parole. Chapter 1 Section 3 Subsection 2 Consumers Byline Incorporated By 1990, Ranier founded his own multi-level marketing company, Consumers Byline Incorporated. It was at a CBI pitch meeting that Ranier met Tony Natalie, who subsequently became a top seller for the organization along with her then-husband. Natalie and her son later moved to Clifton Park, New York to be near Ranier, her marriage ended shortly thereafter. Natalie and Ranier dated for the next eight years. CBI shut down in 1993 after being investigated by 20 states, that year, New York filed a lawsuit alleging the organization was a pyramid scheme. In 1996, Ranier signed a consent order permanently barring him from promoting, offering or granting participation in a chain distribution scheme and ordering him to pay a $40,000 fine. Chapter 1 Section 3 Subsection 3 National Health Network In 1994, Ranier created National Health Network, a multi-level seller of vitamins. That business failed in 1999. In the mid-90s, Ranier and partner Tony Natalie operated a health products store. Chapter 2, Executive Success Programs and Nexium In 1998, Keith Ranier's then-partner Tony Natalie met Nancy Salzman, a nurse and trained practitioner of hypnotism and neuro-linguistic programming. Natalie recalled. Nancy said, you're so wonderful, how can I help you? So I said, well, you can help me with my boyfriend. He had grandiose ideas, and his hours were becoming erratic again. She listened and she said oh that's easy, I can help you. He's a sociopath. They met and four days later she came out with the glazed eyes and gave me the, you don't know who he is, and I was like, wow, there goes another one. Also in 1998, Ranier met Christine Marie Melanacos, a recently divorced mother who had won the title of Mrs. Michigan 1995. She recalled that Ranier explained how there was a profound event that would often happen to the women who became intimate with him, sometimes they would even see a blue light. Ultimately I agreed to be intimate with Keith, and it was just as he said. I even saw a blue light, but I don't think I told him so. I remember thinking, wow, my brain is really susceptible to the power of suggestion. Ranier and Salzman founded Executive Success Programs, a personal development company offering a range of techniques aimed at self-improvement. A few years later, the program was rebranded under the name Nexium. Ranier adopted the title Vanguard from a favorite arcade game in which the destruction of one's enemies increased one's own power. Much of Nexium was influenced by the teachings of Ayn Rand, one of Ranier's favorite authors. Ranier's eight-year relationship with Tony Natalie ended in 1999. Natalie later claimed to have been the victim of harassment. In a January 2003 ruling, federal judge Robert Littlefield implied Ranier was using a legal suit to harass his former partner. Wrote Littlefield, this matter smacks of a jilted fellow's attempt at revenge or retaliation against his former girlfriend, with many attempts at tripping her up along the way. In 2002, Ranier and Salzman succeeded in recruiting members of the influential Bronfman family, heirs to the multi-billion dollar Seagram's fortune. Sarah Bronfman initially became involved, followed by sister Claire Bronfman. Their father, Edgar Bronfman Sr., took an axiom course the following year. Chapter 2 Section 1, Death of Gina Hutchinson and Disappearance of Kristen Snyder In the span of a few months, two of Ranier's associates met with suspicious fates. 
Gina Hutchinson had been raped by adult Ranier from 1984, when she was 15 years of age. In August 2002, Gina resumed contact with Ranier and began participating in Nexium slash ESB, according to her surviving sister, Heidi. On October 11, 2002, Gina Hutchinson was found dead of a gunshot wound to the head, her death was ruled a suicide. Kristin Marie Snyder was a 35 year old environmental consultant who, in November 2002, paid $7,000 to enroll in a 16 day personal development course conducted in Anchorage, Alaska, by ESB Nexium leader Nancy Salzman. The following January, Snyder traveled to visit Ranier and other leaders in New York. Snyder's mother recalled that her daughter had come to believe she was responsible for the Columbia Shuttle disaster and thought Keith was incredible. Snyder, accompanied by her partner Heidi Clifford, signed up for a second 16-day session in Anchorage. Clifford later reported that on the 10th day of the course, Snyder began claiming to be pregnant with Ranier's child. In 2019, it was revealed that Claire Bronfman had claimed Snyder was indeed pregnant with Ranier's child, according to a former IT consultant. Clifford recalled, I was told not to bring her to the hospital. That's what makes me feel really bad. On February 6, 2003, Snyder was last seen leaving the Nexium seminar in which she claimed she had become pregnant with Ranier's child. On February 8, her vehicle was found 120 miles away at Seward, Alaska. Police recovered a note that read as follows, I attended a course called Executive Success Programs, based out of Anchorage, Alaska, and Albany, New York. I was brainwashed and my emotional center of the brain was killed slash turned off. I still have feeling in my external skin, but my internal organs are rotting. I am sorry life. I didn't know I was already dead. May we persist into the future. A separate page added, no need to search for my body. A witness at Ranier's 2019 trial testified that after Kristen Snyder disappeared, Ranier paid $24,000 to obtain the password to her email account. Chapter 2 Section 2, 2003 Forbes Expose In October 2003, Ranier was featured, cloaked in shadows, on the cover of Forbes magazine, accompanied by the appellation The World's Strangest Executive Coach. The devastating cover story, penned by Michael Friedman and entitled Cult of Personality, has been described as a gold mine of previously unpublished information. The cover story discussed Ranier's title Vanguard and detailed his business, Consumers Byline, which collapsed amid accusations of being a pyramid scheme. The cover story included a quote from billionaire Edgar Bronfman accusing the organization of being a cult. Vanity Fair subsequently reported on the cover story's impact within the group, people at Nexium were stunned. Expecting a positive story, the top ranks had spoken to Forbes, including Ranier, Salzman, and Sarah Bronfman. What upset them above all were Edgar Bronfman's remarks. According to Vanity Fair, the Forbes article was a turning point in Ranier's relationship with Edgar Bronfman, that, says one woman, was when Edgar Bronfman became Nexium's enemy. A witness at Ranier's trial later testified that Edgar Bronfman's computer was compromised and his emails monitored by group members for a period of years. Chapter 2 Section 3, 2005 Relationship with Minor Camila According to 2019 trial testimony, in 2005 Ranier allegedly raped a 15-year-old named Camila. Chapter 2 Section 4, Commodities Trades Barbara Bushi spent $1.6 million covering losses of commodities trades which Ranier made in her name. From January 2005 until late 2007, Ranier lost nearly $70 million in commodities trading. Ranier suggested to Claire Bronfman that the losses were due to market manipulation by her father. Beginning in August 2005, the Bronfman sisters covered the losses, ultimately using $150 million of their funds in support of Ranier and his organization. Chapter 2 Section 5, Collaborations with the Dalai Lama 
Eager to distance themselves from cult allegations in the press, Nexium members sought the endorsement of the Dalai Lama, spending $2 million on the project. Eight years later, it was revealed Sarah Bronfman had a 2009 sexual relationship with Lama Tenzin Dondon, the Dalai Lama's gatekeeper who arranged the appearance, and who, as a monk, had taken a vow of celibacy. Amid accusations of corruption, Dondon was replaced. On May 6, 2009, the Dalai Lama traveled to Albany to give a talk. During the event, he presented Ranier with a white scarf on stage. The Dalai Lama additionally wrote the foreword to the book The Sphinx and Thiel's Iapia, which Ranier co authored in 2009. The prior year, Ranier had co authored his first book, Odin and the Sphinx. Chapter 2 Section 6 Mass Resignations and Public Allegations In 2009, a group of Ranier's associates broke with Ranier and his organization, citing concerns about unethical practices and the alleged abuse of his leadership status to sexually manipulate women in the organization. One of the dissenters, Barbara Bouchy, had been Ranier's partner for nine years. In March 2010, Ranier learned that Inner Circle member Daniela had kissed another man. According to 2019 trial testimony, upon hearing the news, Ranier locked himself in a bathroom. Thereafter, he ordered that Daniela be confined to a room with only a mattress and video cameras, where she was held for almost two years. In November 2010, Vanity Fair published an article titled The Heiresses and the Cult in which Ranier's former partner Tony Natalie recalled that Ranier had insisted she keep the body of her dead puppy in her garage freezer and look at it daily. That same month, the New York Post reported on the existence of a video in which Ranier is heard telling two followers, I've had people killed because of my beliefs, or because of their beliefs. In a 2010 Albany Times Union article, Nexium former coaches characterized students as prey for Ranier to satisfy either his gambling or sexual proclivities. In 2011, Tony Natalie filed documents in federal court alleging that she had been repeatedly raped by Ranier. Chapter 2 Section 7 Departure of Kristin Keefe Kristin Keefe was a longtime partner of Ranier and mother of his son Galen. The child, born circa 2007, had earlier been reported to be an orphan adopted by Ranier and Keefe, rather than their biological child. In 2010, it was reported that Ranier had ordered that the child be kept away from peers and that he was being cared for by nannies speaking five different languages. In February 2014, Keefe broke with Ranier and his group. After she fled the region with her son, an email bearing her name explained, I have full sole legal custody of Galen. Keith was experimenting on him. I had to get Galen away. Keith publicly described Ranier as dangerous. In 2015, it was reported that Keith had alleged that Ranier directed Canadian investigative firm Canapro to obtain financial information on six federal judges and a U.S. senator from the state of New York as well as a reporter, an editor, and the publisher of the Times Union. That same year, Keefe further alleged that Ranier had planned to lure his critics to Mexico with an invitation to an anti-cult conference, once in Mexico, the critics were to be arrested on false charges by order of a judge who had been bribed. Chapter 2 Section 8, Patent Infringement Litigation In 2015, Ranier personally sued AT&T and Microsoft, alleging they had infringed on his patents. The following year, the case was dismissed with prejudice. The trial court ruled that Ranier's conduct throughout this litigation, culminating in his untruthful testimony at the hearing on the motion to dismiss, demonstrates a pattern of obfuscation and bad faith. Ranier was sanctioned and ordered to pay $450,000 in attorney's fees. Chapter 2 Section 9, Allegations of Sex Slavery and Branding on June 5, 2017, Frank Paleto was the first to report that there was a secret sorority called DOS and the women known as slaves were branded with Ranier's initials, using a hot cauterizing pen. On October 18, 2017, the New York Times published a story about the slaves and branding, 
and reported that the slaves were required to provide nude photos or other potentially damaging information about themselves if they wished to join. At trial, the prosecution introduced a 2016 recording of a private meeting with DOS slaves in which Ranier acknowledged that the monogram, as it is right now, is very directly related to my initials. The group discussed how to obscure the connection to Ranier's initials. At Ranier's trial, DOS member Nicole recalled that when she and Ranier discussed her decision to leave the group, he said, You guys think you have it so bad, but this is nothing compared to other subcultures. In the wake of the article, Ranier fled to Mexico, accompanied by a few members of his inner circle. Chapter 3 Arrest, Trial and Conviction a search warrant was issued for Ranier's email account on January 18, 2018. An agent of the FBI filed a criminal complaint and an arrest warrant against Ranier with the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York on February 14, 2018. Ranier was arrested by Mexican federal police authorities in a luxury villa outside Puerto Vallarta in March 2018. Lauren Salzman later recalled that the arrest interfered with a planned group sex session, when police arrived, she and Ranier barricaded themselves in the master suite, with Ranier attempting to hide in a walk-in closet. Ranier was then transferred to custody in New York after appearing in federal court in Fort Worth, Texas. Ranier was indicted on a variety of charges related to DOS, including sex trafficking, conspiracy for sex trafficking, and conspiracy to commit forced labor. The indictment alleged that at least one woman was coerced into sex with Ranier, who forced DOS members to undergo the branding ritual alleged by Edmondson and others. United States Attorney Richard Donahue stated that Ranier created a secret society of women with whom he had sex and had branded with his initials, coercing them with the threat of releasing their highly personal information and taking their assets. Ranier's federal trial began on May 7, 2019. Prosecution witnesses included Lauren Salzman, Nexium filmmaker Mark Vicente, victims Sylvia, Daniela, and Nicole, and cult educator Rick Allen Ross. The defense rested without calling any witnesses. On June 19, 2019, the jury found Ranier guilty on all charges after five hours of deliberation. Ranier was found guilty of sexual exploitation of a child and possession of child pornography with regard to minor victim Camila. Sex trafficking of Nicole, attempted sex trafficking of Jay. Identity theft against Edgar Bronfman, James Lopofido, Ashana Chinoa, Mariana, and Pam Kafritz. Trafficking for labor and services of Daniela, forced labor of Nicole. Conspiracy to alter records for use in an official proceeding, and Sex trafficking conspiracy, forced labor conspiracy, racketeering conspiracy, and wire fraud conspiracy. On October 27, 2020, federal judge Nicholas Garfis sentenced Ranier to 120 years in prison and fined him $1.75 million as of January 2021. Ranier began serving his 120 year sentence at United States Penitentiary. Lewisburg, a maximum security penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. On January 22, 2021, Ranier was transferred to another maximum security prison, United States Penitentiary, Tucson in Tucson, Arizona. His earliest possible release date is June 27, 2120, when he will be 160 years old, virtually assuring he will die in prison. Chapter 4 Homicide speculation. A number of Ranier's alleged lovers suffered untimely deaths. Gina Hutchinson was found dead of a gunshot wound to the head. Kristen Snyder disappeared and was last seen at a Nexium event. Living girlfriends Barbara Jeske and Pam Kafritz both died from what was diagnosed as cancer at the time, but is alleged to have actually been subtle poisoning. Ranier's partner Kristin Keefe survived cervical cancer. In 2009, Ranier was filmed claiming, I've had people killed because of my beliefs. In 2019, Investigation Discovery aired a documentary titled The Lost Women of Nexium, speculating that Ranier committed homicide. According to that program, 
A woman who lived with Ranier and developed bladder cancer submitted a hair sample, that sample reportedly revealed the evidence of dangerous levels of bismuth and barium. Chapter 5, In the Media Investigation Discovery released a documentary titled The Lost Women of Nexium, it premiered December 8, 2019. In it, investigative journalist Frank Parleto examines the deaths of four women who had connections to Nexium. HBO released a docuseries about Nexium titled The Vow, it premiered on August 23, 2020.